E N. Carson is C A R S O N. He's still alive. He's 72 years old. This is the man we're talking about. Handsome, isn't he? His life is going to blow you away. And this lecture will take only 10 minutes. We will be done. <laughs> Ben Carson was born Benjamin Solomon Carson Sr. Benjamin Solomon Carson. And he was born in the month of my birth, September. September 18, in 1951. My brother, my sister, he was born. He was born Benjamin Solomon Carson. On the 18th of September, 1951, in Detroit, Michigan. He's still alive, 72 years old. Hey, his life is about to kick you out. My God. Now, he was born to parents Robert Solomon Carson Jr., who was a World War II U.S. Army veteran. And his mother was called... Sonia Carson. My brother, my sister. His mother only died six years ago in 2017. His mother died a long time ago. His father in 1992. In fact, our hero's father was a Baptist minister. But he later became a Cadillac automobile plant laborer in fact he was a baptist minister and he later became a cadillac automobile plant laborer he was raised as a baptist but he later became a seventh day adventist member and also a vegetarian by the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Listen to the interesting thing. At a very young age, he told his father that he would become what white people did not expect black people to be. And his father asked him, what? He said, I don't really know. But we have been relegated to the background. One day I'm going to become what they do not expect us to become. His father would always remind him, this was what you said, but you have never told me exactly what you want to become. Mm. My brother, my sister, interesting thing. See what happened now. His mother was married to his father at the age of 13. Can you believe that? She was only 13 years when she married her father, who was 28 years old. Interesting. His father was a military officer and fought in World War II on behalf of America. As you were told, he later became a Cadillac automobile plant laborer. Listen to what happened next. Hey. The, two, the two people loved their family so much, they did everything possible to make the family comfortable. And even in 1950, they bought a big piece of land about 740 square foot single family detached home on Deccan Street in Boynton neighborhood, my brother, my sister, and moved into it. That was where they were. Our hero went to school, all public schools, and then He decided that it was time to be a medical doctor. This was what he wanted to become. Hey, but his family was so poor. 
Even by grade 9, the family's financial situation had improved a little bit. His mother surprising neighbors by paying cash to buy a new Chrysler, Chrysler car. And the only government assistance they still relied on was food stamps. They took money from the government to buy food. They were that poor. My brother, my sister. But watch the interesting thing that happened. As he was in ninth grade, their finances increased and became better. And the family bought a Chrysler car so the family could move around, even though they were still on food stamps. He attended all black institutions. Academically, he was extremely bright. Hey, in school, he became so studious, studied very hard. In fact, in grade 10, 11, and 12, he excelled in chemistry and physics. He worked as a biology laboratory assistant at Wayne State University the summer between the 11th and the 12th grades. He wrote a book known as The Gifted Hands. There's even a movie about it where he talks about his youth. He had a violent temper. And as a teenager, he said, and I quote, I will go after people with rocks and bricks and baseball bats and hammers. He told the NBC, oh my God. He said he once tried to hit his mother on the head with a hammer over a clothing dispute. While in the ninth grade, he tried to stab a friend who had changed the radio station he was listening to. Fortunately, the blade broke in his friend's belt buckle. Carson said the intended victim, whose identity he wants to protect, was a classmate, a friend, or a close relative. After this incident, Carson said he began reading the book of Proverbs in the Bible and applying verses on anger to himself. As a result, he stated that he never had another problem with temper. The Bible saved him. The book of Proverbs. Oh my God. My brother, my sister, in various books and at campaign events, he repeated these stories and said it. He once attacked a classmate with a combination of lock. Mm. But the Bible saved him. Our hero for today, Ben Carson, also said that he protected white students in a biology lab after a race riot broke out at his high school in response to the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. Black people were on a riot looking for white people to kill. Somebody who had a violent anger and had been rescued by the Bible's book of Proverbs now was saving white people from lynching and race riots. My brother, my sister, he was able to make it to the university. And Albert, the poverty of the family, he rose to the top. He entered the University of Michigan Medical School a year before I was born in 1973. And he struggled academically, doing so poorly on his first set of uh, comprehensive exams uh, that his faculty advisor recommended he drop out of medical school or took a reduced academic load. And uh, if he wanted to finish, he needed to listen to the advice. But he continued with a regular academic load and he became a little bit more studious and more focused. And he made it. When he came out with a degree, 
1977, four years later, and he was elected to the Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Medical Society. My brother, my sister, he was then accepted by the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine neurosurgery program where he served one year as a surgical intern and five years as a neurosurgery resident, completing the final year as chief resident in 1983. He then spent one year as a senior registrar in neurosurgery at the Sir Charles Gardner Hospital in Netherlands, a suburb of Perth in Southern Australia, where he gave birth to his senior most child. My brother, my sister, little did we know that what he said in childhood, that he would do what white people did not think he would ever do. And here you would see him very well clothed professionally as a neurosurgeon. My brother, my sister, look at what happened. He went into the Guinness Book of Records. Oh my God. When he made history in 1987. Listen to this. In 1987, Carson was the lead neurosurgeon of a 70-member surgical team that separated co-joined twins, Patrick and Benjamin Binder, who had been joined at the back of the head. It's known as Craniopagus twins. My God, Craniopagus. They were joined at the back of the head. Twins. They had to decide to go and bath together, walk together, talk together, eat together, do everything together. Our hero for today brought together a team of 70 neurosurgeons. And he went down into history as the first man in history to separate twins. And this is our hero. And you see some of the members of his team around him, my brother, my sister. They did the surgery. A producer would show a photograph of the separated twins, the binders. My brother, my sister, he separated them and went into history as the first man to ever do that. Benjamin and Patrick Binder. Look at it. My brother, my sister. Black. He did what he was not expected to do. He made his story. Ben Carson is our hero in the African history class today. And we are winding up. He has written a number of books. A number of books he has written. And look at the twins. This was in 1987 when they were brought onto the surgeon's table. Look at how their heads were joined together. My brother, Patrick and Benjamin Binder, they were separated. And look at them, the separated twins. Do they look at them? Every day, they send a message to Ben Carson, thanking him so much for making them live as individuals, even though twins. The two of them would have lived their lives like this. In America and around the world, they said they were unsepar inseparable. Nobody could ever separate them. But our hero for today decided to take the risk. He was warned by his association. He was warned by other doctors and even senior doctors. Neurosurgeons of quality and high standing. They said, don't try it. The brain has come together. They are one, one, two in one. Don't do it. But he took the risk and he separated them. Separated them. Today, look at them. And look at how he explained how he separated the two. The brains actually were together. But this great man decided to put the Bible on the table 
and pick up his neurosurgery tools. And he succeeded in separating them. My brother, my sister. Then he went into politics. Now, according to CNN, Carson had an extreme, extensive relationship from 2004 to 2014 with Manatech, a multi-level marketing company that produces dietary supplements made from substances such as aloe vera extract and so on and so forth. He is an avid vegetarian. Today is our day, all vegetarians. We deserve that hug. My brother, my sister, Seventh day Adventist. He is an Adventist. He is a vegetarian and also a politician. When Trump became president of America, he gave him a position, but he turned it down and said, I don't have the experience to do this. And here you see Trump. But Trump gave him a position that he had enough experience in. And this time around, he took it. What was the position he gave him? My brother, my sister, he gave him urban. Position of urban and residential stuff right there in America. And he took that. My brother, my sister, he became the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. And he did it to perfection. He also wanted to be President of America. In fact, in 2016, following the footsteps of Barack Obama, he wanted to become president. He had registered as a Republican, changed his registration to independent in the 1990s after watching Republicans impeach President Clinton for perjury regarding an extramarital affair with Monica Lewinsky. He was so disappointed, he decided not to be a Republican anymore. My God, I just saw so much hypocrisy and both parties, he said, in both parties. So he became an independent candidate. My brother, my sister, he supported Barack Obama. Oh, yes. Mm. He loved Obama. He encouraged Obama. He himself wanted to stand for president, but he decided to withdraw. My brother, my sister, after he got low votes and some other such things. My brother, my sister, is married to yet another black woman, a fellow Detroit native. Her name is Lassene Candy Rustin. Yes, he is married. My brother, my sister, he met his wife in 1971 and they got married in 75, four years later, when they were both students at Yale University. My brother, my sister, Today we remember this great black man. He has received a lot of awards around the world. He has even lost count. He's a member of the American Academy of Achievement, Alpha Omega Alpha. In 2000, he received the award for greatest public service benefiting the disadvantaged, an award given out annually by the Jefferson Awards. The following year, in 2021, he was elected by the Library of Congress on the occasion of his 200th anniversary to be one of the 89 who earned the designation Library of Congress Living Legends. Oh my God. In 2004, he was appointed to serve on the President Council on Bioethics. And in 2005, Carson was awarded the William E. Seaman Prize for Philanthropic Leadership. In 2006, he received the Springer Medal from the NWACP, their highest honor for outstanding achievement. My God. Ah. And then in 2008, the White House awarded Carson the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor from the White House. He did what was not expected of him. Racially, as he said. Hey, in 2008, 
First Theater Society awarded Carson the First Theater Lincoln Medal for exemplifying the qualities embodied by President Abraham Lincoln, including courage, integrity, tolerance, equality, and creative expression through superior achievements. Oh my God. He became the first man to grab all these at once. The most decorated black man in recent times. In 2008, the U.S. News and World Report named Carson as one of America's best leaders ever. And in 2010, he was elected into the National Academy of Sciences Institute of Medicine. My God. My brother, my sister, today we remember this great black man. Today we remember you at the age of 72. You are a shining star to all black people and the black race. This is 3FM. Black!